back to another video in this playthrough for GMT Games Prime Minister. We are playing the Clockwork C2 scenario, uh, climbing the greasy pole. Uh, and with that, we will just jump right back into the action. Okay, we're back for turn three and we're doing bill selection. So first things first, oops, I don't wanna do that. First things first is I'm going to draw two cross party bills and this is just awful. I really wanted something with moderates because I wanna poison his deck with moderates, but the best thing I can do is this Windsor Castle Act, um, which is at least has the benefit of being A minus 30. So that was unfortunate, not what I was looking for. So once again, he is gonna be drawing from the cross party deck, just to remind. Um, he draws liberal bills if partisans is greater than 250, but they're only at 170 right now. So he will be drawing cross party bills. So he draws five of these, one, two, three, four, five. So one thing we can say is that um, these moderate bills, actually this moderate bill at plus 20 is, is likely out of his range. It is only gonna get to 200, but his the bottom end of this is 250. So I think both of these, so this has an initial projection of 230. So that is not within his selection range. This has a uh, projection of uh, 200, which is definitely not within his selection range. So he's going to get rid of both of those immediately. Now, the rest of these have um, two VPs. So then we look at what he's going to prioritize. So first things first, he's going to, pri and this is actually fairly simple to, to determine, but we'll walk through it anyway. So first things first, he's going to prioritize standing points. So he's going to... Uh, favor the Interpretation Act for shortening the language used in Acts of Parliament. That seems like a reasonable but boring thing. Then the next thing is he'll do this because it is the, the next tiebreaker is largest net gain in popularity. So the Windsor Castle Act. And then finally, um, even though this one is going to drop his, po drop his popularity amongst farmers, um, who apparently are opposed to cruelty, who, who uh, prefer cruelty to animals. Um, he's going to prioritize this one because it gives him a, a level two supporter, um, whereas uh, this one actually brings him no benefits other than VPs. So that is the sum total of all of that. So with bill selection done, uh, we move on to, uh, to actions. So our clockwork opposition leader is going to take an action. Um, once again, his, his, still, uh, his flattering is still futile. So what he's going to do is he's going to debate. So he's going to debate a bill here. So what we got to look at, hang on, let me, uh, I tend to forget to do this early on and I need to. Um, so this bill currently is at 340. Oh, sorry, it's no higher than that. 360. This bill is at 360 because 350 members of parliament plus 10. This is at 330 and this is at 330. So those two bills that are in the 330 uh, range are probably going to, um, they fall within his attack range. And so he's gonna prioritize it very similar to the way that, um, that, uh, that we did during bill selection, which is this is gonna be his priority. Um, and so he's gonna take this, this is currently at 320, I should say. So this will take, his first action will take that to 310, and his second action will take it to 300. So he is going to uh, debate twice. Now, if nothing happens on that bill, uh, well, if nothing happens on that bill, he would do it again, but um, we, we shall see. So then I have two actions this turn. I now have two actions, and I have this handy dandy and fancy new ability, which is to coordinate debate. So um, I just wanna look, so here he's at 360. So the best I could do if I did this was get it down to 330. Um, and I just don't think, I don't think I can prevent him from passing this bill. Um, the only thing I could do is I could, I could cause him to waste time on it. 
which might not actually be a terrible thing. Um, because hitting these level two supporters can sometimes be bad. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that. Um, and I I could drop this one, but I also know that um, with uh, that he, he's not gonna target it, and my opposition leader is gonna target it one more time. So what I'm think I'm gonna so what I'm I'm debating here is between uh, dropping this bill a bunch, which means he may only pass one bill this this session. Um, or uh, drawing a supporter card, drawing a or doing a hobnob, but I think I'm gonna be kind of bold here, and I'm gonna try to put him behind the eight ball, and I'm gonna drop this 360. So that bill is now down to 290 projected votes. So he's gonna spend his time. So he's probably gonna spend some of his time on this, but I'm hoping that we can maybe uh, hold him off on it. So finally, uh, I take my standing, which then gives me the campaign ability. And I think this is pretty useful right now because um, we need to start, like we're way behind in the election projections and we need to start catching up there. So with that, we go over to the prime minister. So his event is if uh, his standing is greater than nine, it is. If his, the highest bill is greater than 320, and we know there is a bill over there greater than 320. He's going to spend one of his cubes to ha cause us to go up in up in liberals. So I'm just going to put this here to remind me that I used it for that. So we are going to go up in conservatives. He is going to go up in liberals. That doesn't result in any change here, uh, but uh, at least it bleeds an action cube from him. All right, so now we move on to actions from our clockwork prime minister um so he technically his first action is influence but there's a clarification in the rules that says that to use the influence he, they'll use the influence action if at least one bill falls within his defense range for that um and there are no bills on the board that are even moderate or partisan bills so i'm going to choose to interpret that to mean that Essentially, there's zero bills that are within that defense range because there's no moderate or partisan bill. So he's going to skip that action and he's going to move on to this plus 10 HB action. And that action would be targeting the bill with the highest vote projection, which is our Cruelty to Animals Act. Um, but that act is actually not within that is not within his uh, defense range um, that he that bill is currently at uh, 360 projected votes. So it's safely going to pass. Uh, so he is going to treat that as futile. So, so he is actually going to move on to uh, moving up one with the middle class. And similarly, the next row is basically exactly the same, except it ends with the gentry. So he's going to, in that case, move up one with the gentry. So he uh, moves up one with the gentry. That's plus two moves up one with the middle class, that's also plus two. So he is now way over here on the election projections and I have got to find a way <clears throat> to bring him back. So that is the end of that and we move on to bill resolution and this is pretty easy. So this bill is currently at 290. This bill is currently at, uh, at 300. Uh, so he is going to resolve this bill. So the Cruelty to Animals Act gets two VPs for both of us, uh, and he goes down one with the farmers. So everybody goes up by two VP, but he goes down one with the farmers. So that will at least pull him back into a more sane range. Now this last result, he gets a level two, this is a level two supporter. So level two supporters are handled slightly differently in the clockwork system. Uh, when they come from a bill, what I do is I take this card, and since I'm not going to play it now, um, this is a hold for election card anyway, um, I rotate it to indicate that it's a level two card. So, but we are going to hold that for an election, which means we're not going to play that until there's only one bill on the board. Um, and when we do play it, we'll talk about how you handle a level two supporter card, but that tells me it's a level two supporter card. So he has resolved that bill. Uh, we don't have a challenge, we don't have an election. So we're gonna uh, reset and keep going. Okay, so give it him four VPs, myself two VPs, reset all of the action cubes. There's no bill selection. So our opposition leader is going to move on 
and so he's not going to attempt to curry favor but there is one bill left on the board that is within his attack range so this bill right here is currently at 300 so he's going to spend one debate action to drop that to um down to 290 now it's no longer in his attack range so he's going to look at um going up in conservatives but i think conservatives are pegged i think conservatives yeah conservatives we are at the top of that so the next thing is going up one in the gentry so he is going to campaign amongst the gentry and we still have room there so he will bring that up and move that over there so now it's my turn and um just want to so all of these bills i believe are now so these bills are still technically within his defense range um just his defense range for all bills is 280 to 340 and that's this in this case this is because he actually has two turns to potentially um pass them So I could spend some time debating one of these bills down, but he's going to move one of them a maximum of three, which is going to bring it back into both into into Russell uh, Aberdeen's defense range. So I think for this turn, I'm going to pause on on that um, action and I'm going to use my first cube to draw a supporter card. And that is going to get me plus one with the gentry or plus one favor with a queen victoria from lord alfred tennyson um the favor is not terrible because it you know i need to get this eventually but the problem is if i move that favor up then my uh my opposition leader is going to spend his turn um doing favor and i don't really want him to do that so i could simply save this for a future moment um which is exactly what i think i'm going to do i'm just going to put that into my hand and i'm going to save that for a future moment um because i can play it at the start of my next turn prior to the election if i need it for the gentry and i'm going to draw yet another supporter card in this case i get uh charles dickens so i can either uh go up one in the liberals or i can choose to send someone down one in the middle class and uh, we have room to go up in the liberals but it's kind of useful to be on the bottom of that track so i'm going to cause him to go down to with the middle class so that will bring him back to the 11 space there and so we played charles dickens and so we've spent both of our cubes um we now get one more standing so we are creeping up and we actually are in a range where we could tech hypothetically challenge him our favor is lower so we can't yet but we can't challenge him anyway until we take control of the government so it doesn't matter so normally you would play supporter cards actually you would start by doing an event so is the pm projected to lose the next election then he will spend a cube to go up with the middle class he is definitely not projected to lose the next election so we're going to ignore that so normally you would play this supporter card next, but this supporter card says hold for election. You can see that there just above the GMT logo. So I'm not actually gonna do that because um, we, we these cards typically will have things that are gonna help with the election. So you hold them until just before. So he is going to um, spend three cubes. So he is going to target, basically he's going to, with his first two, it's gonna be the highest bill, but they're both tied. So there is no highest bill in this case. Tiebreaker wise, this bill goes ahead. So he's gonna target this bill. So with his first two actions, he's going to debate that bill and raise it by two. And then with his third cube, he's also going to do a debate action and that will just cause him to select this bill again so that bill has now come all the way back to 320. but i do know we have the ability to um we have the ability to to sort of prevent him from passing that next turn so i'm not that worried so for bill selection um he cannot pass either of these bills we've got one at uh one at 290 and one at uh one at 320. so what he's going to do is he's going to uh he will uh, withdraw the Windsor, Ca Windsor Castle Act since it has the, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, since it has the lowest vote projection. So he's going to withdraw that. And as a result, um, we get, uh, 
always need to remind myself of this. The opposition leader gets one standing and two. So he gets one standing. He loses one standing, and then we get two victory points. We are still far way behind here. Um, we are not holding an election. There is no challenge in this case. They are creeping close, but again, I, we won't challenge unless we can get into government. So that is the end of this turn. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I uh, hope you're enjoying the video, uh, the playthrough uh, of, of Prime Minister, um, as well as the channel in general. Uh, please leave comments with suggestions on uh, things like other games that you'd love to see come to the channel or improvements uh, that can be made uh, to the channel. And we will see you in the next video on Agility Snips Gaming Table. Thank you.